D-S-L-R Film Noob. All right, guys, what I've got for you today is the Must HD 5.6 inch field monitor. This is an HDMI field monitor that sports a pretty impressive resolution of 1280 by 800, which is pretty nice for a monitor that's running under $300. This has a lot of interesting features like multiple battery options, locking HDMI ports, as well as some other cool stuff that we'll get into in the rest of this review. But first, let's take a look in the box. Taking a look at what comes with the Must HD 5.6 inch panel, we have the panel itself. We've got a sun hood that's also included with the unit. We've got an HDMI cable, which is pretty common for these monitors. We've got a mount, which is also pretty common. We've got an AC power adapter, if you would like to power this from a wall socket. You've got multiple battery options, including the Sony NPF970 battery plate right here, the Canon LPE6 battery plate right there, as well as a Panasonic D28S battery plate right here. It also comes with this nice little remote, which is a different option you don't see very often. Also, you get a few screws. These screws are pretty handy. They're used to mount these battery plates on the back of the panel. If we flip the panel over like so, you'll see that there are multiple buttons on these battery plates. Those slide in like so. These two are to release the battery, and then the center one is a click release for the plate itself. First thing I noticed when I picked up the Must HD monitor is that it's extremely light. Even with two LPE6 batteries installed on the back of this unit, it weighs a lot less than my small HD DP6 monitor. This thing is made up completely out of plastic with the exception of the metal for the mounting points on all sides. So it's not extremely durable. I wouldn't chuck this out of a car or throw it down on the ground. It's not machined aluminum, it's plastic, so it'll crack or break if you really treat it poorly. It also has a lot of vent ports all the way around. So this isn't really designed to be in inclement weather. If you get any water in there, I'm pretty sure you're gonna mess this thing up. That said, for a price range of $300, this is made pretty well. It feels nice and solid in my hand, and even though it is all plastic, it does seem like if you take care of it, it'd be pretty durable and last you quite a while. At first, I was a little skeptical of the remote control option, but I think it's a pretty good feature, actually. You can program any of these buttons here, as well as these buttons down here to do pretty much anything you want. You don't necessarily have to have F1 on the remote and F1 on the screen assigned to the same thing. In order to assign these, you simply long press the button and it'll bring up the menu. You can scroll through the menu and select whatever function you would like to assign to that button. Hit OK and you're good to go. In this case, I have focus peaking set to F1. I have false color set to F2, and I have the punch in 30% for F3, which gives you a pixel to pixel on the screen. These are three pretty handy features, and I think that's really nice that I can have this away from the monitor, still see the monitor, and have access to the controls without having to reach in and touch the monitor itself. One of the unique features included with the Must HD field monitor are these locking ports on the back. These are HDMI locking ports. You slide this in, and it slides over and locks the HDMI cable in place so it can't be yanked out while you're recording. This is a pretty nice feature and something you don't see on a lot of HDMI monitors. You use this by inserting your HDMI cable like so and then pushing this all the way over until it snaps tight. After that, you have a locked and held HDMI cable against the field monitor. This is nice and solid, and it's a pretty interesting thing to have. The only issue I have with these is if you don't have a cable in there, they do rattle around a little bit, so you might wanna just pull them all the way out when they're not in use and keep them in a bag or something like that. The menu system on the Must HD monitor is actually pretty nice for a monitor in this price range. It's not really designed to change all of the features in the monitor. Instead, they've kind of got this set up to work around these buttons down here at the bottom. So you've got F1 through F4 keys, and those are assignable to pretty much any function you want. That way you have quick buttons for any of the major functions you use on a regular basis. They also have your focus peaking button, as well as your video source buttons over here, and your zoom aspect ratio, and your menu system on off. One other cool thing about the menu system on this monitor is if you press in on this scroll button right here, there's your brightness setting, press it again, your contrast, your chroma, your sharpness, your volume control for your headphone jack right here, that makes it pretty nice if you need to get to any of those particular color adjustments for the monitor fast. A number of you asked me to check on the two BNC ports on the back of the Must HD monitor. They are not SDI outputs, they are composite outputs, underlying composite outputs. I spoke with Must HD and they said that they hope to make these SDI outputs in the future, but this particular model does not have SDI out, it's composite only. So if you're planning on using this as an HDMI to SDI converter, it's not gonna happen. This is composite only via the BNC ports. The zoom feature on this guy 
is really nice. This monitor is 1280 by 800, which is about 720p resolution. So a 30% zoom in basically gives you a pixel to pixel matching on this screen. You hit the zoom in and now you can see pixel for pixel the 1080p image that's coming from the camera. Hit it again and you're out of the zoom feature. That is a really nice option to have right there on the screen so that you can access that really quick, check critical focus, and then turn it off again. Out of the box, the Must HD monitor comes with three battery options. The NPF970 Sony batteries, the Panasonic D28S batteries, and the Canon LPE6 batteries. All three of these are fairly common batteries and chances are you probably have a set of LPE6 or the Sony NPF970 batteries laying around the house. If that's the case, you should be good to go to power this thing. If not, you can always buy generic batteries in any of those common formats on eBay or Amazon and get this thing going pretty fast. As for focus peaking itself, this is one of the setups that I'm not really super fond of. I prefer to have the red line instead of the high contrast area, but this panel still does a pretty good job. You hit it once and you get light focus peaking, which basically just gives you a high contrast area to look at. Hit it one more time and you get strong focus peaking. And let me go ahead and adjust the focus on there now. If you watch this fan right here, you can pretty much see right there when it's in focus and then right there when it's out of focus. It gives you a really high contrast image of the fan itself once it comes into focus again. Now let's hit this one more time and we are out of the focus peaking menu. The controls on this monitor are well thought out and I'm pretty surprised and impressed at how well they work. The sun hood that comes with the Must HD monitor is actually pretty nice. It creates a complete box around the screen, protecting it on all sides from incoming light. You can also put this up to your face, which basically blocks out the sun so you can see what's going on on the monitor. This is a pretty nice design and I'm surprised that they include this good of a sun hood with this low price monitor. It also has some felt on the inside that prevents reflection from the sides being beamed back into the monitor, which is a nice extra feature. On top of that, it folds up into this nice convenient package and completely protects your screen from any scratches or whatever when you throw this in your bag. One other feature you might be interested in is this aspect button right here. If you click on the aspect button, it changes the aspect ratio. So if you're somebody who's shooting at 2.35 by one for say anamorphic or something like that, you can adjust that accordingly to get this set up to the aspect ratio that you use the most. In this case, I generally use 16 by nine, which is more handy for me. It also has the option to set up markers on screen. If you hit this markers button right here, it'll give you the action safe box around your image. So you kind of know where you want stuff to be going on. This is pretty handy if you're somebody who's familiar with using it. If not, then you can always just leave it off. The headphone jack is located conveniently at the front of the unit. When I listen to audio through the headphone jack from a camera that actually outputs HDMI audio, if you click on this button right here, you can scroll through to the volume controls. Turning this up, the noise floor on the audio monitoring for this monitor was pretty high. It's got kind of a low hiss to it with a little bit of noise being picked up from the environment. I don't think the audio amplifiers in this Must HD monitor are top notch. They're good enough to monitor your audio, but you're not gonna get crystal clear, clean audio out of this thing when you're monitoring via the headphone port. So keep that in mind if that's a major feature that you really want. After spending some time with the Must HD panel, I can safely say that I'm pretty impressed. This guy offers up a ton of features that are pretty smart and clever for its price range. That whole remote control option is really nice, as well as the multiple types of battery plates that are easily interchangeable with interlockable buttons. The screen resolution of 1280 by 800 looks really nice out of the box and you don't have to do any adjustments to get this to look just like what you see on your camera. There are a few downsides like the fact that it's made out of plastic and the headphone jack is a bit noisy, but those are things that are easy to overlook for something in this price range. It offers up focus peaking and a bunch of the other features that are available in more expensive panels and it does it at under $300, which makes this a very attractive option. If you don't need something that's made out of machined aluminum and you're okay with taking care of your equipment, this Must HD panel is well worth considering, especially for the price range. One thing I would like to see and hopefully a 
future firmware update is audio level meters on screen. That isn't really handy for Canon users, but if you're a Blackmagic Pocket Camera user, that could make this a really attractive option, especially for under $300. If there's some way to do that Must HD, I would recommend adding that, and you could sell a ton of these beautiful monitors to Blackmagic Pocket Camera users. The Must HD Field Monitor is pretty easy to recommend for the price. At under $300, this packs a lot of value, and it's a really nice looking screen. Anyway, I'll have a full write-up over at DSLRFilmNoob.com, and you can find links to all this stuff in the crotch bar below. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and if you like this content, you should do one of these right here. Be sure to check out the second channel, the link is above. Also don't forget to swing over to DSLRFilmNoob.com and sign up for the mailing list so you can get updates monthly on what's going on the website as well as both of the YouTube channels. Also make sure to check me out at NAB, I'll be hanging out in this yellow shirt looking just like this. So say hi, say hello, and you know, whatever. So long and thanks for all the shoes.